Hi, this is Rosalind Eve, and we're looking at another exciting new piece of art. Something different, an abstract, and this is part of my series here of mini art analysis that we're doing on high quality and masterpiece art. And you can see this is a high quality image. This is where I got it. And you can see here it's artists trying to make a living creating and it's the name of the artist is Tara Gyurkovitz. Okay, this is the image. Now you can see I'm missing just a touch of red on the side here because of the uh, the background here, trying to cut out the background and just keep the image. So there's a little tiny bit missing there on the side. Okay, so let's move this down. And there's the image. And this is going to be the image that I'm going to be changing. Okay, so the left one is her original image there. Okay, so color you can see is a, a big main ingredient that affects this image. And you can see that she's used variety mixed with color because look at all the variety of colors that she has there. And you can see that it is mostly busy space. And you can see that she's got lots of detail. And these are all ingredients like spices that artists can add to a recipe of art. And you can see that she's got lots of light to dark because you've got dark here and you've got a lot of light here and coming up into here a bit. And that all the bright and cheerful colors and intense colors uh, do certainly create a happy mood and and out of all the ingredients I would say that the light to dark would be one that I could make suggestions with now when you look at this image having the the flow go upwards like this because it's thicker here and then it gets thinner as we go up this direction here it's kind of like water fighting gravity and talking about light to dark you've got all your your light and dark down here concentrated in the bottom with your non busy space so normally we like to see a couple of areas and we've talked about the third lines as being sort of like PowerPoint so that's here 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 and here approximately are the four PowerPoints I call them PowerPoints. They're cross where the lines would cross of the the rule of thirds. If you divide it all into nine equal portions and you drew little lines, then that would be where they cross, and I, I call them PowerPoints. Okay. So if you put, you know, strong color, a mass of it, or non-busy space, a mass of it, or light to light or dark, you see, and there's a mass large enough to um, hold your interest as the main area of interest, uh, then that's m using your ingredients to their maximum potential. So then you're going to have much more of a masterpiece if you use your greedy ingredients to the best ability that you can. And so we have here color busy and non-busy detail variety in color variety and size variety and shape we've got light to dark so that's variety too because this is the full range and mood now contained it isn't <laughs> uh, because we want all the main ingredients to be in from the edge and there's the such a large mass here creates it to be a, a, a main area of interest and when you put it up against the side of an image any edge then main areas of interest will tend to want to take you off the edge and just keep going you're not you lose interest in the artwork so much quicker than if it is contained within the image so if we look at it from that aspect how can we correct that and you you might think well there's so much color here we could just put a big patch of color okay well if that's true then watch I'm gonna change her original image by adding a layer here 
see I just added that right there this piece of color we'll take it away see put it back okay does that solve the problem well sort of but not really because the real problem or shall we say the weakness in the image is this all the non busy space and black so when you combine two ingredients together then you're giving it more strength so having it be the darkest and the lightest but this is also non busy creates that to be a strong area of interest and yet it's out at the edge it should really be in here or light because you're gonna look one like a dark because there's more dark than there is solid light there's only a little bit of actual light here and again the most light light is <laughs> biggest mass is out here at the edge okay so how could we correct that for next time or if she was still had it and wanted to correct it then these are the corrections that I would make and I would do that I would add this dark area up in here and I would add this to keep your white in further I would cover it in pink or whatever like some soft uh, colors there instead of the white I would take some of these beautiful colors in here and put it to cover some of the black mass here okay so you're not wanting to be drawn out to the edge and covering up the whitest white here and we're going to put the white somewhere else okay so let's add in the background and you can see now you don't have this stream flowing off the image which you don't want lines and things going directly from one side to another and you like completely without being broken well these are broken but they're still really powerful because there's so many of them all in a row there and uh, and lines going off the page especially larger wide uh, lines are not and that's uh, more of a no-no in other words it's a bit of a weakness in the overall look of the image so we're also going to look at well then what do we do to make a main area of interest here this could be seen as a main area of interest because of all the um, how it's almost like encircled here but it's not a strong one and adding white back in see how I just added white back in here to help balance the mass so now I've got the dark that was all over here I've got it balanced up here and a little bit less of it down here so now it's a little bit better distributed in the image and because dark is bigger quantity than light then you're going to be drawn more to the light so that's why I put the light up here and I'll show you again where it is do you see it flashing there right in here see okay so then that pulls balances some of the black and it balances some of the white and it puts this one on the power spot so now that one will tend to be more of a main area of interest this may compete with it to some extent because this should really be whiter but I didn't think that we could make it a whole lot whiter or it wouldn't seem to fit within the image okay but we also have this white right next to it so we've got white and white and that creates a strong enough mass um, it breaks up this black area in here a bit and so it brings some more weight over into this corner and some weight of white here and weight of white here okay so now I'm going to show you something that you may find interesting as well look at what happens when we look at the image differently because here you're looking at it and you're thinking well you know I'm not really seeing anything you know that might turn me off or make me think that the painting isn't ideal until you go like this so we go to rotate canvas and this one image rotate canvas okay so this is her original image here and this is the one that I've changed now do you see how the lines you know tend to just kind of carry you right through the image there that's what I'm talking about and see how the gravity is now taking the water or what could kind of uh, seem like a movement or water coming down and through now it seems to be 
going more with gravity where the other way it wasn't okay so and you can see that the the dark space is a little bit better distributed here and the white isn't carrying you off the page so do you see now we'll do it again we're going to rotate it again okay image rotate canvas and we'll do the same with this one okay so again doesn't it when you start spinning it around you start to see where the weight of ingredients and things are and how well balanced and such they are and so just like technically this could be improved and it's not to say that it's not a great image and people wouldn't love to hang that on their wall because it is it's an it's a really high quality really good image it's just it could be see we go from there to masterpiece you know and I'm not saying that mine is a masterpiece I was just trying to show you how you could move more in that direction of a masterpiece so you can see that we've got a little bit better balance and dis distribution of weight to make it more interesting to move around within the image where you all tend to just want to go directional here down 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 and then a little bit off here see now you want to move around a little bit more within the image so we're going to rotate it again and this one and you see it still looks good you see how this still looks good it doesn't matter what direction that you're putting it it still has a really nice movement and flow to it and you see this again it's like you know it tends to go off the page and there tends to be a lot of going off the page here with you know being drawn over into this dark space so blocking out some of the dark and and holding it in here would have made a much stronger image is what i'm saying we want stronger and more memorable and that's what practical art analysis my method of practical art analysis is about is to help artists to create stronger and more memorable images okay so i hope you found this to be interesting and the this artist used her particular uh, ingredients and i think she did a very good job and this is the artist this is her name again just so you have the spelling okay and this is me this is my Facebook page and that artists group again is a Facebook uh, artist trying to create a living that is a Facebook group okay and this is my Facebook page where you can find me and if you want a, a private analysis done let's say you're putting in a piece of artwork for a contest and you want to have it analyzed to see its strengths and weaknesses well my fee page is there and this is my email if you need to contact me and my email of course practical art analysis at gmail.com and this is the address on Facebook to find me. And of course, the end part is practical art analysis. My page is the art advantage, and that's the address of it. Okay. Well, thank you for joining us again, and I guess we'll see you again soon next time. Thank you. Bye for now.